Alrighty, I'm gonna show you guys how to change out the AC compressor in a 5.7 liter V8 Hemi Dodge Durango 2005. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you get all of the R134A out of your system. There's one of your valves. Here's your other one. All right, so that's gonna be your first step. Next thing what we're gonna to wanna to do is remove any covering shroud, um, the air as well, and kind of get a free working space for you to get in there and change out anything that's necessary to change. Um, you see the compressors right here at the top. It's very, very easy, very simple to get to. We need a new serpentine belt as well, but I guess that will come for another day because we don't have the part right now. So we're gonna replace this with the same exact um, compressor. You can literally see on the compressor which one it is, and it's usually best to change it out with an OEM model. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter for these two screws here. I'm going to use an 8 millimeter. Remove the securing bracket. We can remove this whole intake system here so we have easy access once again. So now that we remove the air intake, we're gonna go and loosen this screw right here to remove this shroud. You can also see in this bottom left corner, right here, we're gonna go ahead and replace that as well. This just pops right out, guys. I'll show you the routing on this.
All right, so I'm trying to show you guys the quickest and easiest way to do this. So I didn't remove the belt all the way. If you look right here, see I still have it kind of notched up and in the exact position it needs to be. So everything has been removed so far that is necessary to be removed. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take out this last screw. It's right here in the back. So you had one screw right over here and you had one screw over here. Now let's go and remove this last screw, remove the AC compressor. And then what we're gonna do after we remove the compressor is dump out all of the oil and measure that oil and then put in the new oil into the new compressor so we have the same amount of liquid as before. All right, I'll show you guys the next step when we get there. All right, so I went ahead and installed the new AC compressor. You're also gonna have a little metal um, guard on your rubber lining right here that you need to put onto right here. Make sure you guys dip it into the oil and then you will clean the old one off. Put the new rubber garment on. And then once you put the rubber garment on, you're gonna go ahead and put it through the metal garment and those will be set in stone. All right, so once you've finished installing the new compressor, I'm assuming that you've already had the system professionally evacuated because guys, this is really bad for the environment. So please do not just evacuate this into the air. All right, have a professional do it. Um, make sure your system is fully evacuated. If you're watching this, this video just to know how to use the gauges and to refill the system, with a simple vacuum pump, um, then I'm assuming you have already had it evacuated. So once you've had it evacuated, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and put the high side onto the high side, which is right here, and you wanna put the low side onto the low side, which is right here. Now, what you'll do is I already have this hooked up, is you're gonna go ahead and to open it is you're gonna turn it all the way clockwise in all the way clockwise in as well. And this is gonna give you a fully open system. Now, what we're looking to see is does the vacuum hold? We wanna make sure that needle isn't moving. So we have these in the closed position as well. I already have it hooked up to the vacuum so you see that it's already um, in the vacuum area or the vacuum space of the nozzle. So what you wanna go ahead and do is turn on the pump. I'm using a little pump right here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And now I want to open up the gauges and you'll see the valve, how it's going down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to wait about 45 minutes. So if you have any hobbies or errands to run, now is the time. You want to make sure that all of the moisture is out of the system. So again, we want to make sure that all of the moisture and the pressure is out of the system so we're creating a vacuum right now. So let this run for about 45 minutes. Once this is done, what you're gonna do, I'll show you right now, is you're gonna go ahead and we wanna make sure that the vacuum is holding so we're gonna close it. And that's what we like to see. Nothing is moving, it's staying at the 30 mark. Turn off the vacuum and show you guys. Nothing is moving, it's staying at the 30 mark. So we know that we have a fully evacuated system. So once these are closed, we can go ahead and close these as well. So we're gonna go counterclockwise, counterclockwise, and we can remove the system. And then we can fill up the system with a very stock hose if you don't have the adapter piece. So if you don't have the adapter piece, you can, piece, you can just use one of these hoses or the cans of refrigerant R134A that you'll buy from the auto parts store. You're gonna hook it up to the low side right here and you're gonna add in your refrigerant. And I'll show you guys how to do that on the next step momentarily. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to refill the system. Now, I know a lot of you might have a slow leak or might have a big leak. Some of you might have no leak at all. But regardless, I'm gonna show you guys in case you do have a tiny leak, which I think that there is a minuscule leak in this system. Um, I've already replaced the O-rings in your top two, as well as the dryer receiver over here, as well as any other O-rings that may be causing a leak. So what I'm gonna do, and this is the more expensive way, so I don't recommend it, the best way is to get the UV dye by itself, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in this refrigerant 
um, with the UV dye in there. So I can check later and see where the slow leak is. Now, unfortunately, if it's a slow leak and I do find it, I will have to redo this process again, but I still wanted to walk you guys through it and show you guys what I had to go through and how to do this. So first things first, what we're gonna go ahead and do is now we're gonna go ahead and turn off the valves or close the valves. You see we're at the 30 mark. And it's still holding at 30, which is good, which is almost showing that we don't have a leak. Now we turned off the pump and we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our high and low pressure. So remember to close this, open is clockwise, closing is counterclockwise. All right, so that's closed. We'll go ahead and remove this. Make sure to put the cap back on there. It's just simple. So you see, this is fully open. Now we're closing it by going counterclockwise. And everything's closed off. That's it. All right, so we're not gonna put that cap on yet, but what we're gonna do is we're going to use this adapter. Now this goes for your regular 134R cans right here. And I'm gonna go and screw this on and then show you guys the next step, all right? All right, so we went in and installed the adapter and installed the actual valve to fill. Make sure you're wearing gloves, guys. You don't wanna get frostbite. Learn from my mistakes, so I didn't get frostbite, but just don't don't do what I'm doing and wear gloves. I actually just ran out of the gloves. That's why you saw in the earlier part of the video, I was using nothing but gloves, but now I just ran out. So you gotta do what you gotta do, but make sure you wear gloves. Now, if you need to see how much refrigerant you need to use, your, the sticker is usually located somewhere here on the front along the top of the bumper. As you can see, mine is right here. And it's saying for a single unit, which is just front AC, that we need 1.875 pounds, and for a dual unit, we need 2.5 pounds. And you can just go onto a Google calculator or divide it yourself and get the amount of ounces you need. And then what you'll do is you'll actually weigh out the can and see how much refrigerant you need to use exactly. So once you get the exact ounces, you can weigh the can and make sure that you're putting in the correct amount of refrigerant. All right, so the next step that we're gonna do is go and turn on the car. Replace both the windows. You guys saw in the earlier video that someone broke into them. So now what I like to do is I like to start with the AC on low. And then we're gonna notch it up all the way to high. So you see it's blowing out 115 degrees, guys. 116 degrees. All right, let's see if we can change that. So we're gonna make sure the AC button is on. We're gonna go and connect the refrigerant to the low side. All right, so now that we have the car on, guys, we're gonna go ahead and connect the AC to the low side. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and open up the valve. You can give the can a little shake sometimes. All right, so now that we have the refrigerant going in, make sure that your can is placed somewhere where it's not hot because this can explode. And we're gonna go in and crank the AC up. We're going to open up the valve all the way now. Remember, we're gonna to wanna to turn it from the 12 o'clock to the three o'clock position. You see the pressure went up the more is going in. The AC has been fixed. 